We lost a legend recently, folks. Tony Gwynn. Now, if you don't know who Tony Gwynn was, uh, he actually was arguably the greatest hitter of all time. Arguably. I'm not going to give him the greatest hitter of all time, but certainly you can argue it. This guy played his entire career for one team. He actually played college for the same place. He played in San Diego State, then played for over 20 years in San Diego, or maybe exactly 20 years in San Diego. And the special thing about this is San Diego is never good. Never good. I mean, they have sucked. I want to say they might have had like four or five winning records his entire 20 years there. But yet this guy was so... He was just so it was so much part of the community that he would take deals for less money than he could get from other teams just to stay in San Diego on a losing squad. I mean, this guy... I'll go over the stats in a second. But I think the best thing about Tony Gwynn was what he did for the San Diego community. He was the most involved athlete almost ever in San Diego history. Maybe in, like, entire sports in all. This guy ran charities. He went to uh, the San Diego Pitching I mean, I'm sorry, Hitting Academy to help just teach kids just for free. Uh, after he was done and retired from San Diego Padres, he just went back to coach at San Diego State, coached the likes of Steven Strasburg while he was there. I mean, this guy just loved the place. And while I was doing my research on Tony Gwynn, I kept coming over story after story after story of, I'll just give you one of the stories. There was a, there was a guy who grew up in the San Diego area, um, was a big baseball fan, was working on his hit, hitting and was at the San Diego, uh, I believe, batting academy is what they call it. I'm not exactly sure on that. And he's in the cage and he's, you know, taking some swings and it's just not working for him. Something's just not right. And he's he keeps trying time after time and just can never quite get it right. And all of a sudden he hears this voice. And the voice is, hey, kid, that bet's too heavy for you. You need a lighter bat. And who is it? It's Tony Gwynn standing behind him, just randomly walking around. And, you know, this kid's idol is, is standing right behind him, giving him pointers. I mean, just because he loved people. This is one of the guys who did not mind sacrificing his time to make the community better. I mean, you heard stories of uh, how he would sign autographs from, like, sunup to sundown. I mean, after the spring training practices especially, he would just sit there all day, signing autographs, signing autographs, because he knew that him doing that little thing, taking that time out of his life, made somebody else's life a lot better. He was one of the, the best examples of paying it forward that you'll find in sports. I mean, I do not usually think that sports pros should be role models, but this was one of those guys that he could be anybody's role model. Now, unfortunately, we lost him to a battle with cancer um, and at 54, so he was way too young to, to go, but let's just go over a little bit of his stats, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, he had a 338 career batting average. That's amazing. Uh, he's a 15-time All-Star, 8 batting titles, 12 times in the tw top 20 in M MVP voting. He only played 20 20 years, he was considered an MVP candidate on a horrible San Diego Padres team. Let's not forget that. We cannot forget how horrible those teams were. He's a five-time gold glove winner, which if you don't know what a gold glove winner is, it's it's a, an award given to the person who shows best glove skills. I guess it's kind of in the name, you know, like defense and everything for that position. So you give away nine gold gloves a year. He's a seven-time silver slugger, meaning he's the best hitter at his possession. position. Uh, I dare say you could have probably given him a couple more of those. Uh, he played 20 years in San Diego and coached Steven Strasburg. So that guy was so special. And I haven't even gotten into the part that probably made him the most special. Now, growing up, he was kind of, he had a stigma about him. He was a big guy, had tiny, tiny hands. I mean, like, people would talk about how tiny his hands were. That's how tiny they were. It, it's kind of like that Burger King commercial. Remember, they were like, "Let's go get a Whopper," and the guy's like, "I can't get a Whopper." They well, were why not? Baseball too, weren't they? Like they were out playing. They were. They're, I think they were playing. I, they were either playing basketball or football. Yeah, they were playing a sport. Well, I go, my hands are tiny. You know, it, it's kind of like that. So he used to use this bat that was about half the size of everybody else's bats because his hands were too small and he couldn't quite grip the bat right. Now this guy was the master at controlling where he hit the ball. If you tell him, hey, we have a guy on third, we need to hit, hit it to right field so we can maybe sacrifice, he'd hit it to right field. Uh, his, his, his spot was dropping the ball in right 
behind the third baseman right in front of the left fielder, which he could do consistently. This guy was amazing. And yes, if you look at some of his videos, he did get bigger in his later years, but he was a base stealer in his early career. I mean, this guy was just amazing. So, you know, Tony, Tony Gwynn, we'll miss you, buddy. We'll miss you. Yeah, one last detail about him. Uh, could you mention that he went and he played college in San Diego and then he stayed there? Uh, from the story, did he also grow up in San Diego in, originally? See, I don't know if he grew up in San Diego. I know he grew up in California. I'm not exactly sure where, but he went to San Diego State for his collegiate career and then came back there afterwards just because he loved the area and loved the place. Yeah, maybe, maybe he just loved the place from being there for uh, for college or whatever because I've heard San Diego is a really nice city, like, 70s year-round. Yeah, like, a city that never gets above 80 and never goes below 70. I mean, who can complain about that? Right on the beach, Southern California. Uh, yeah, if you don't like that part of the world, I don't know what's wrong with you. Because me, I hate the heat. I really do. I like it to be colder. But San Diego just sounds like a great place to live. Yeah, and if you would like to send us out to San Diego... <laughs> Hey, if you have a couch I can crash on in San Diego, hit us up at wordsformyface at gmail.com and I will be coming. Or you can hit us up on Twitter. Or wordsformyface.com. Or comment down below. Or am I missing anything? At wordsformyface on Twitter. Did I already say that one? I did. But after okay. we've uh, pro promoted ourselves enough, Tony Gwynn, I miss you guy. Yeah, I don't think we can promote ourselves too much. I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> Promotions just keep going on and on and on. If we talk yeah. about people dying, and you know, we'll just promote ourselves. <laughs> oh, he's dead, but look at us! All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. we we kind of we kind of went off track on that one, right? We there. are the most sensitive uh, sports hosts ever. Well, I mean, that would be saying something because I don't think most sports hosts are sensitive. So, and we're not sensitive either. Sorry, mm. but we are saluting Tony Gwynn. But yeah.